being a Rotarian is now even more rewarding. The good you do comes back to you. Rotary Global Rewards. Good morning, or as of five minutes ago, good afternoon. I just realized the clock on the wall is right and this one is wrong, so I apologize for starting a little late, but welcome to the Rotary Club of Tulsa, so we're glad to have you. That ringtone is worth $25, see Catherine after the meeting. Uh, this, is a club where <laughs> this is a club where a bunch of good people are doing great things here in Tulsa and around the world. Today we have a really exciting program from one of the most dynamic, impactful and fun groups in Tulsa, and I can't wait to hear from the chairman of Typros. So let's get started. Our invocation today is by Pastor Scott Owens of Discovery Church in Jinx, Oklahoma, song and pledge by Jerry Dillon, and visitor introductions by Tiffany Eggdorf. Pastor Owens? That thing just keeps going, doesn't it? It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Would you join me in a word of prayer? God, we thank you not only for this day. We thank you for the challenges and opportunities that this day includes. We ask that you would give us your strength and wisdom to deal with those challenges and inspiration from each other to meet them and to meet them full on. God, we ask that you would uh, bless the food that has... Uh, been consumed and is being consumed, and we ask <clears throat> that you would bless the hands that have helped to prepare it. Father, again, thank you for this chance to be here. We thank you so very much. We pray these things in your name. Amen. I don't know of another place in the city, but at Rotary, all Rotaries, to be able to sing a song that in your own mind you can see the beauty of our country. So let's sing, Oh Beautiful. America. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. What a beautiful, hot day we have to enjoy Rotary. I would like to introduce our guests and visitors today. If guests would stand along with their host when I call your name, and if everyone else would hold your applause until I finish, we'll give them a rousing round of applause at that time. Ryan Knotts, Mercedes manager, and his host is Greg Keck. Josh Lee with Consumer Affairs, host Catherine DeCamp. Tammy Stokes with the Southside Club, host Duff Weddle. Angel Harris, our youth exchange student with Duff Weddle. Joanne Emmons, wife of Jerry Emmons. Travis Hedrick with J Mark, host Robert Walters. Michelle Singh, Peyton Newman, and Catherine Cook, all with Pricewaterhouse Coopers, all guests of Andy Avila, our overachiever today. Rodrigo Rojas with Teach for America, host Tim Colwell. Sarah Frey with the Gatesway Foundation, host Kathy Gorell. Daniel Brunson with Rotaract, his host is Jeffrey Rudd. 
Also with us today from Rotaract, Mallory Smith, Ryan Brown, Kyan Camus, and Cadel McElhenry. And Cherie Kosa with CP Solutions, host Amy Mitchell. Let's give them all a, an applause. Welcome. Thank you all for being here, and we hope you'll come visit us again. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Um, our upcoming programs next week, Mike Knopf with the Oklahoma City Boathouse. Uh, August the 17th, we have a panel that includes one of our own, Karen Keith, and then Bill Major and Jeff James, talking about endless, ending homelessness in Tulsa. And August 24th, we have U.S. Attorney Danny Williams and DEA agent John Scott. The funny part about John Scott is the office has been looking for a picture of him for about two weeks, and I said, duh, he's a DEA agent. <laughs> You're not going to find it. I want to apologize for that phone uh, ringing because that's my daughter's ringtone. So when that thing went off, I wanted to jump off the stage and say, what have you done now? <laughs> so uh, it, it did distract me personally, but from that aspect. Our sponsors this morning, Chuck Wilson is here representing Associated Mortgage. Thank you very much. And Doug Stewart with J.D. Young. Let's give our appreciation to those. We have one committee meeting today, new member orientation. I hear they're very busy. Let's keep them going. And they're meeting in the Beacon Room. Uh, one announcement today, Ron Butler is at St. John's Hospital still. He's in ICU. Um, it was rough sledding the last two or three days. He's kind of come around a little bit today. Uh, you can visit Margaret. Uh, whether you can get in to see Ron is kind of sketchy at the point because he's ICU, but I know that Margaret would appreciate those visits. But more importantly, they would appreciate your thoughts and prayers on the cards you have on your table today. So give your uh, thoughts to Ron and Margaret and the rest of their family. I would like to invite the fast Jeff Hassel up to the podium now with Angel Harris to give us a very special presentation about her Rotary Outbound Exchange year. Jeff. Thank you, President John. It's always great when we get to meet new young people, and it's even greater when we get to meet extraordinary new young people. And so today it's our privilege to meet Angel Harris, who is about to embark on an adventure to Japan, thanks in great part to her sponsor, which is the Southside Rotary Club. And she's agreed to come today to uh, for a little interview for us to get to know her better. And I haven't told her this yet, but after this is over, Angel, you'll have 380 other people who will be thinking of you uh, while you're overseas in your year and hoping to hear back from you when you get back. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you go to school, et cetera? Or where did you tell me you graduated early, right? Yes. I graduated from McLean Technology School down there in North Tulsa. I graduated my 11th grade year. I was fortunate enough to have enough credits from taking high school courses at Edison Preparatory. I see. So, and then you were involved in Interact when you were in high school, right? Yes, I was involved with the McLean Interact. And at first we had Ms. Taylor, now we have Ms. Campbell as our um, sponsor adult person. I think she actually left. She's doing something with Rotary, actually. And so we will get a new sponsor. I will ensure it, even if I'm <laughs> gone. Interact was a very positive part of my life. Even without the exchange, it was just wonderful seeing the youth of McLean wanting to do something productive, wanting to do something helpful, and I want to keep that going. And it was your interact involvement that had some part in you becoming an exchange student, right? That oh, yeah. made some, you met some people or kind of started the process? Yeah, it was funny. I actually invited myself to an interact club <laughs> meeting. <laughs> I was like, what's going on in here? And you know, Mr. Uh, Jeff Willifer, he was a member at the time, and he was just like, oh yeah, come on in. We, we welcome members. And then I met Mr. Brett that same way. And they were just really accepting. They didn't think nothing of it. It was just, hey, I'm, I'm here now. And wow. so I started doing more things with. So that one little moment led to, led to all of this. So tell us where, where you're headed and when you will be leaving. I leave August 23rd. I will be going to Japan. I will be in Aichi Prefecture. It's near Nagoya. Um, it's a bit mid-south of Japan. But I will be in Nishi with my host family. Wow, and so you, as I understand it, sort of uh, gained an interest in Japan and the language and the culture kind of on your own. How did that happen? Um, well, we finally got a computer in the house, 
And I was the one that was always on, and I've always been pretty technical. And there was a song on there. It was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was called Shiki no Uta. And Say that again slower. Uh, <laughs> Shiki no Uta, um, Song of Four Seasons. And it was such a beautiful song, and I was like, this language is so cool. I found out the song was from this anime cartoon show, and I fell in love with how the language sounded, and I just pretty much went from there, and I taught myself you know, ever since middle school. And you've taught yourself, do you mean you've taught yourself Japanese? Yes, I can speak basic conversation Japanese. All right, so you told me when we were sitting there that you would say a few things for us in Japanese, so keep it nice. Of course. Yes. <laughs> And so what did you say? I said, nice to meet you. My name is Angel. I will go to Japan this year. I will become a Japanese exchange student. That's great. I knew somebody would try to show off out there. You guys can discuss things later, Jerry. So, and you've learned to write the Japanese script as well. That, that's not easy, I'm sure. It, I, was, uh, I love to draw. And the thing with Japanese is that it's calligraphy. And so if you can draw well, you can pretty much write well. Write well. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's always been interesting. I can't really comprehend that I can read it. I'll read something and understand it. I'm like, I can't believe I just did that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's good. So, and then you told me that you were you had made contact by uh, email or some other way, some tech techno way, mm -hmm. with someone in Japan, and you would assume they would prefer to be spoken to in Japanese. So you wrote your message in Japanese. Oh yeah. And what happened next? They responded in English. Your Japanese is good. <laughs> I was like, thank you. I was like. I I assumed, I hoped you liked the email. It was a pretty long email. It was actually really difficult Japanese. I had to think really hard. And so, but it's common for exchange students to only have a very basic knowledge of the language of their country where they're going to, right? Oh yeah, I mean, some of the other Japanese exchange students, and I'm talking about all over the world, they, they barely know how to say konnichiwa. Like, I was like, I don't know what you're gonna do when you get there because <laughs> you're gonna get lost. <laughs> so what do you know about how many, you may not know the exact answer, but what do you know about how many Americans are headed to Japan to be exchange so students? So far I've only really talked, I've spoken with 10. Uh, I'm, I know there's more, but for Japan based I've only spoke with 10. There was Washington, uh, Michigan, me, and then the other ones never said their states. So you told us a little bit about the fact that you just recently, or sometime in the fairly recent past, got a computer in your house that made me want to ask you, tell us a little bit about your family here in Tulsa. Oh, well, I was adopted. They had gotten me when I was six months, and they officially adopted me when I was four years old. Um, it's in one of the poor areas, but I don't know, I'm really close with my neighbors, and I like that. My mom always took in kids from the neighborhood, so I never really knew who my brother or sister was or wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but officially, I do have 16 siblings, and I am the youngest. Wow. The youngest of 16. So tell us what their reaction is to you being going to Japan and being gone for so long. And I'm sure there, there have been different reactions. Tell us a bit about that. Oh, no, none of them like it. None, none of, of them, them like it? None of them. Because they're going to miss you? They're a little in their xenophobic ways. They don't want to learn about another culture or country. And so they fear what they don't know. And it's just been reactions like that. I've been having the constant like, that's, that's xenophobic, that's racist, don't say that, don't do that. <laughs> uh, but some of them come to terms with it because they'll talk to me and I'm just, I'll just say, I'm going, like, I'm, I'm going. So don't be negative, either be supportive, be supportive or I'm going. So what's your plan about how to communicate uh, with your family back here in Tulsa when you're over in Japan? I, I know my siblings I won't have a problem with. My mother and father, have phones that are way too advanced for them already. <laughs> like I told her, I was like, Mom, can you get Skype for me? She's like, what's a Skype? And I was like, it's, you can get it at the app store, you get your game. She's like, oh, is it a game? I'm like, no. She said, yeah, Mom, it's a game. <laughs> no, because then she won't talk to me. She'll open it, she'll like, this isn't a game. Like, I don't want that one to talk to me. I'm your daughter. Well, maybe your, your siblings will hand your mom the phone while they're Skyping with you. They will. 
Yeah, they always have go. to. Yes. There you go. So tell us a little bit about the outbound camp that you went to, the district outbound camp. How many were there and what did you learn there? There was less than 50 of us and they took our phones. They took your phones. That was good. Yeah, no, no technology for none of us. And it was pretty good because in a way it kind of showed us how we would be lost in translation and just pretty much lost in general because some phones, like I know my parents can't afford to like get my phone working in Japan. So I'm going to be lost with it without a phone or with a phone, really. And besides that, it really helped me kind of come to terms with having two cultures and going to experience another culture and kind of just accepting those differences instead of just being like, oh, that's weird. You know, I've, I've done that all the time. Like, I'll go, I don't know, somewhere in Southside, and I'm just like, oh, this is weird. Uh, like, I don't know what to do here. So you're going to have to park that part of your... <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, you learn that things are different and you accept yeah. them. And I've always been right. about that. Like, people are kind of... You know, some people it's easier just to go, oh, we're the same. It's like, of course we're humans and all, but we're different and that's great. Like you have a different type of background than I do. I want to learn about it. Don't you want to learn about mine? And things like that. Right, so when you get back, what, uh, what will be next for you, you hope? Um, I'm really hoping to keep my studies up because I actually want to enroll into a Japanese university. And if that doesn't work out, I would like to go somewhere in state and finish my major, like finish majoring in um, sociology or maybe law. It's always been either or for me. I know it's definitely one of those two for me. Um, I definitely want to get back into my community. Um, McLean is a dropout factory school. You know, kids go there and they basically dropped out. We, I was one of the juniors out of five to graduate with less than 50 people when we started off with 100 seniors. And that will never be okay. And so definitely I would love to just give back to my community. You know, I've always helped with tutoring, whether it's high school or middle school. And I would just love to keep that up to ensure that McLean stops being a draft out back to the school. All right, so you, you, one last thing, two last things. First one is you need to brag on yourself a little bit. I understand that at the camp, I'm, you, there was an award given to you at the outbound camp, the district camp. So tell us all about that. I meant to bring it and I'm really sorry that I didn't. It was a rubber chicken. <laughs> but the thing was, he was talking about rewards and things like that, and like I had to raise my hand as soon as I saw that chicken. And he was like, yes, Angel. I was like, I want that chicken. And he was like, well, we'll see if you'll get it. And at the end of the camp, the chicken basically went to who the road text is, you know, the students who've already been on exchange, you know, the Rotarians there, who they thought would be the most successful on their exchange. And I got the chicken. <laughs> and I was very happy. <laughs> And the reason I got it for it was even better, so two wins. Good. Well, we'll um, we hope that we get your address, and you. So maybe some of our Rotarians can send you some notes of encouragement, or maybe even some little uh, uh, things to help you remember us by, or maybe something you like to eat that you won't be able to get in Japan. All right. Yeah. All of those things, and we. <laughs> And we understand you've promised to come back and tell us how your experience was when you returned. By the way, when do you return? I re ooh, they really actually haven't given me, given me an exact date. And I know, but it's going to be after May. After May. May. And right. also, I really, like, South Five has gotten y'all spoiled because I love them so much that I'm going to ensure that I blog about my adventures. I'm definitely going to be posting videos and keeping up a blog and, you know, having pictures and things like that. It's really going to be for Rotarians, but, you know, other people can enjoy them, but I'll probably, I'll probably directly talk to Rotarians, like make videos of like, oh, hey, Rotarians, you know, other people can watch, but it's, it's for you guys. Great. <laughs> and where will that be? Um, it'll be on YouTube, things like Facebook. Uh, Facebook will be private, so as long as you friend me, you can see it and things like that. But YouTube will probably be public, where we keep the more public videos, like, oh, here's the Japanese store and things like that. Facebook will be, here's my host family, here's my little brother, here's my little sister, and things like that, because that's really cool also. Okay, great. Well, thank you, and best of luck thank you guys to so you, much. and please stay in touch. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff and Angel. Have a great time. Thank you. Be sure and come back and uh, keep in touch with us with that game Skype. You're in that game, right? Like, you pull it up and, okay. So, S Skype us and we'll converse with you. In English. Yes. Okay, okay. It's always a great meeting when we get to meet a new member. And today, Linda Bradshaw is going to make 
uh, the introductions of her. I would also like to recognize past president uh, Bob Sade and Paula Wood for sponsoring her into the club. And also a thank you to John DeBar for conducting the orientation this morning. Now, Linda, if you will come forward. May I extend my apologies to this entire club for my phone going off. I'm not going to pay that fine because I think my pastor should pay it. She challenged all of her congregation to set their alarms at noon and say the Lord's Prayer. And that's what was going off. It was noon. <laughs> so I think that Jessica Moffat should be uh, fined. <laughs> Well, you know, it's always wonderful, like uh, President John said, to welcome a new member. But our, our sponsors, I think, need to be recognized as well. And so if you don't mind, I'd just like to recognize our sponsors. If they would stand sponsored today, um, we have Paula uh, and uh, Paula Wood and Bob Sade as sponsors. If you two would stand, please. Um, everyone knows Bob Sade in this club. Uh, he's an Allen Edwards uh, Society member. He's a Club Foundation Fellow. He has perfect attendance since 1977. That's an amazing thing. Um, a past president, 2001-02, and Rotarian of the Year, 2014-15. And then we have Miss Paula Wood, and she's been a member of this club since uh, 2010. She's a Paul Harris Fellow. She jumped in and co-chaired immediately Shop with the Cop. She served last year on Rotary Board as the Youth Services Director. And this year, she's co-chairing the Global Grants Committee with uh, Jack McClunphy. Uh, she is just recently retired from the Tulsa Public Schools as Director of School and Community Relations. And uh, she continues to serve on the John Hopkins uh, University Talent Development Board, very involved with nonprofits. So Ms. Paula, thank you and Bob for sponsoring our new member today. And I'm going to ask her to stand. She is not a stranger to this club. I would like to introduce to you Dr. Kara Gay wilson Neal. Um, she resides at 2121 South Yorktown, and she will be known as Kara Gay in this club. She completed her doctorate in administration education leadership at the University of Tulsa in 1978, holds an MA in English and a BA in history, both from Oklahoma State University. She's a graduate of Midwest City High School, and her positions in education include teacher, principal, superintendent of public schools in Broken Arrow, Glenpool, Tulsa County, and Oklahoma City. Dr. Neal was a Fulbright Scholar in Italy in 1979. She was the last elected Tulsa County Superintendent of Schools from 1987 to 1993 and has held administrative development and adjunct professor positions with the University of Tulsa, OSU, and Northeastern State University. From 1993 until December of 1999, Dr. Neal served as superintendent of Metro Tech Technology Centers in Oklahoma City, one of the largest multi-campus career tech districts in the state. And then she returned to Tulsa in 2000 and served as president and CEO of Volunteers of America in Oklahoma until January of 2000. So in June of 2002, Dr. Neal joined McGraw Realtors and for four years she was the Rookie of the Year and consistently among the top firms, 10% of realtors for residential sales. She obtained that real estate broker's license in 2006. In June of 2003, Governor Brad Henry appointed Dr. Neal to the OSU Tulsa Board of Trustees. She resigned from that position in 2008 when the Tulsa Technology Center's Board of Education selected Dr. Neal as superintendent CEO of the state's largest career tech district. She served in that position for four years until 2012. That year, Dr. Neal was asked by the University of Tulsa to become the director of the School of Urban Education. In the fall of 2015, Dr. Neal joined Chenoweth & Cohen Realtors as a broker associate. She has served on boards of the Tulsa and Oklahoma City Chambers of Commerce and on the boards of the United Way in both cities. She served on the boards of the Oklahoma Aquarium, the Magic Empire of Girl Scouts, Juliet Lowe Society, and the Oklahoma Academy for State Goals, the Women's Foundation of Oklahoma, and a member of Leadership Oklahoma. She remains active with the Metropolitan Tulsa League of Women um, Voters. 
In 2015, Dr. Neal was inducted into the Oklahoma Educators Hall of Fame. And Rotarians, I think every one of you should stand and give Dr. Neal Carragay a warm welcome into the Rotary Club of Tulsa. Linda, th thank you so much for performing that today. And Kara, welcome. We look forward to working with you and getting to know you better over the coming year. Our Rotarian of the Day today is Daniel Brunson. Daniel is a store manager at Hicks Brunson Eyewear, a fourth generation family business that's been located in Utica Square since 1952. He has a bachelor's degree from Northeastern State University and is certified by the American Board of Optom Opticianery since 2009. Daniel has been interviewed multiple times by TV and print media for his optical, optical expertise, experience, and knowledge of fashion eyewear. In his spare time, he enjoys training for marathons, sounds strange, and being with his family. No, running them's fine, training, no, no. Please welcome our Rotarian of the Day, Daniel Brunson. Thank you, President John. Uh, today's guest, I'm very excited about. Daniel Regan is the chairman of the board for Tulsa's Young Professionals, one of the largest organizations of its kind in the country with over 8,600 members. He is also the executive vice president and director of leasing for Canbar Properties. With over 30% of downtown Tulsa in their real estate portfolio, KPM owns and manages over 2 million square feet of commercial development amongst 13 unique properties within the historic Central Business District. He also serves on the boards of the Downtown Coordinating Council, as well as the Foundation for Tulsa Schools, and is the co-chair of Tulsa's Great Raft Race. In his spare time, Daniel co-owns and creates works at his family's metal arts studio, Garden Diva Sculpture Company. So please give a warm rotary welcome to Daniel Regan. Thank you for that kind introduction. And thank you all for uh, allowing me time to be here and speak with you today. Uh, I just must say that it is very inspiring to be in a room of individuals like yourselves, to see friendly and familiar faces in the crowd and to know what good work that you do in our community. Uh, it is inspiring to me and to people of my generation to know that we're standing on the shoulders of giants in this community and you guys have laid great groundwork for us to pick up, carry that torch and continue on. So thank you again for this opportunity and for uh, uh, give me a little time today to tell you about TIPROS, a organization that I'm very familiar with, as you've heard here, and uh, have much passion for. So TIPROS stands for Tulsa's Young Professionals. The organization started back in 2005. Uh, I was very young then, had just come back from a sabbatical. I was, I was living in Costa Rica on the Pacific Coast, managing a little hotel, uh, managing a stable of horses, and not really sure what my life would, uh, would provide and what it would entail and whether or not I'd even come back to Tulsa. Born and raised here, I'm a fourth generation Tulsan. Uh, great grandpa moved into his manufacturing shop in downtown what's now Yokozuna. Uh, that facility was his manufacturing facility back in the 40s. And uh, so I had a long tradition here, had a lot of family still here, and knew that this was a place that had opportunity. But back then in that day and age, back in you know the early aughts, it was pretty pretty tired. It was, downtown was very dead. Um, you know, it didn't feel like there was a ton of opportunity, and what uh, the chamber, in all their wisdom, had recognized at that point is that we were having a brain drain, what they called at the time a brain drain, which was a lot of really great, talented individuals were coming to Tulsa, getting a great education, taking full advantage of the low cost of living, and then going elsewhere for the opportunities for jobs and careers, or the quality of life that they so desired in their community. And so, in their wisdom, they realized we can't, as the chamber, go and convince these kids to stay. It's really gonna take their peers going out and convincing them to stay, and the best way to do that is to empower them and give them resources. Back in 2005, what used to be the Adams Mark at the time, if I remember the hotel brand correctly, was uh, we had a big forum, about three or 400 uh, young people that they gathered together, and the, they said, we wanna develop this organization for what you want it to be. We wanna empower you to create the community that you see yourself living in in 20, 30, 40 years. 
And so we sat around and we, we took notes and, and had a brainstorming session, and out of that created unique and distinct work groups, focusing on key areas that were clear, uh, clearly had synergy and, and a resonance with our demographic to uh, help empower them to make that, that whether it's you know, diversity or sustainability or uh, workforce, make it something that they could have impact on. And so we sat around and, and really developed this game plan at that time uh, for what, this, what, what we could be and what we wanted to do with it. So jump around here to my slides. Thai Pros uh, created a mission. And this is a revision of the mission, so it's been adapted over the last 11 years that we've been in, in uh, power. But the uh, mission here is to attract and retain young creative talent to the Tulsa region while also developing the next generation of leaders and enhancing Tulsa's sense of place. Again, recognizing at the time back in 2005 that we had this brain drain, we wanted to encourage this uh, ownership of the community and to create a resource for young people to be able to have opportunity to help impact change and be change makers. From that mission, we created a vision which is to promote the awesomeness of Tulsa, be ambassadors for our community, uh, people like Angel who are going out to other communities and, and will hopefully represent Tulsa well, like myself who is out in Costa Rica that can help to communicate what it is that really makes this community great and encourage people to come back here as well as our friends that are thinking about moving, give them some hope that this really is something that they have the opportunity to impact and affect. So promoting the awesomeness of Tulsa is, is paramount to that. Driving change in the community, again, allowing a place as a resource for our members and our constituents to go out and take ownership, whether it's boards and commissions to this day, we're, we're placing people in uh, positions where they have some authority and control over significant budgets and outcomes in the community, uh, to community service, uh, working to attract and retain businesses, or uh, working with other nonprofit organizations like Rotaract or like other groups that are stakeholders in the community and have opportunity to really have a direct impact on the daily life of just all constituents of the city of Tulsa as well as being a resource to all talent. Again, uh, we have a pretty significant budget that we fundraise independently, and so using that budget as a resource for crazy ideas of our members. Uh, we like to say yes and. Yes, that can happen, and let's make it happen, and how do you want to see it happen? So you know, really not putting any barriers up to somebody's passion and, and their desire to get involved in the civic or community involvement. Uh, we have, to this day, 8,700 members. As Daniel mentioned, we're one of the largest of our kind in the country. Uh, we re are reached out to very often by cities like Omaha, cities like Nashville, Austin, uh, Chicago, all around the country that look at us and say, how the heck do you do it? What is it that gets your organization so much traction within the powers that be in the community and within your, your own demographic to actually get them involved. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of the secret sauce today and, and going back to that original concept of making it easy to say yes and giving resources to do it for your change makers and your doers. And what we did in Typro specifically that I share welcomingly with anybody that asks is we said you have a seat at the table and we aren't going to ask you of anything. None of our members have to pay any dues. They don't have to show up. They just have to say, yes, I'm willing and I'm able. And we provide them with everything that they need to accomplish. So knowing that people will get burnt out, that people will, especially as volunteers, will uh, hear no and get disencouraged or disenfranchised, what we did is we said, you have all the opportunity in the world, and we aren't going to put any requirements or uh, stipulations on you. And that has allowed us to be one of the largest organizations in the country in the country, excuse me. Um, additionally, it has allowed our active members to be one of the largest populations in the country as well. So people that actually show up and participate and become active in our organization, planning the programming that really has an impact on the day-to-day -day of everybody sitting in this room, uh, we don't put any barrier to that. We say lower the barriers, provide all the opportunity, and let them plug in as they want. I think I may be uh, doing what John told me not to do, which is point at the screen here. Uh, if we, thank you. Uh, again, uh, so 8,700 members, uh, back up here just a few. Jumped ahead. 8,700 members, uh, average of five new members a week. We're generally the first stop for anybody that's coming to our community, whether it's a new university student or somebody that's just moved into town. Usually they're coming to Tulsa to say, we hear you guys know everything. 
help us learn everything and get plugged into our new network of friends. And so what we do is we have these events called Say Hey. Uh, they're the first Friday of every month down at 36 Degrees North, right in the Brady District. And we bring in new members, new people to town, and give them an immediate friend. We say, we're here, we're of like mind, and we want to help you make our community better and more impactful. So we sit with them and, and give them really the lay of the land in the community, who's involved and who's, uh, who's making things happen, and then also give them a way to plug into our organization and network with individuals of like mind. We then take them and walk around First Friday and really showcase some of the really exciting things that are happening in the community, again, to get that first hook in them and to get them excited about what's happening and how they can play a part in it. Again, back up here on my screens. So our reach is pretty exceptional on our social media, which is where our demographic is getting most of their news, most of their information. We've got 33,000 individuals connected digitally to our organization, adding those five new members every month to our membership roles and having an e-blast that sends to about 10,000 individuals. So we are very well connected to them, and we make it easy for them to connect to us, knowing how their easiest going to they, they will best receive information in the channels that they'll easiest receive it. Um, in terms of how to get them plugged in and the focus of our organization, what came out of that initial strategy session that said, how do we get people excited? How do we get them passionate and to take ownership? We created these work crews that you see represented here by their icons on our screen. Uh, the first being diversity, uh, focused highly on making sure that we have an inclusive uh, work, workforce and an inclusive community. Right now we're actually working, our diversity crew is working to do an audit of the boards and commissions in the city of Tulsa to make sure that they're representative of the community that they're serving, provide that information to our new uh, incoming mayor elect, and uh, make sure that they are armed with the most up-to-date information to uh, make a decision that will have a long-term impact on how people of my generation look at the community. Because if they aren't represented, then they feel like they don't have any skin in the game and any opportunity to really impact change. So diversity, they also do great things like the interfaith tours. Uh, they go around to uh, all faiths and really give an open door policy, an opportunity for a candid conversation with people that aren't of the like mindset, that have differing opinions. And we do it in a civil way that encourages people to inform themselves and to get more involved as they see fit in those organizations. Arts and Entertainment, one of our most popular crews, one of our newer crews, uh, focuses heavily on just that attraction piece, making sure that we showcase what's awesome in our community. Whether it's doing a sneak peek of the Frida Kahlo exhibit or going down to the Woody Guthrie Museum and, and helping them with the programming or Guthrie Green for that matter and setting up artists that are new to the community or that don't have those connections with the opportunity to get presented and showcased. Again, working to make sure that we aren't just talking to white collar individuals, that we're talking to blue collar, that we're talking to creatives, that we're an inclusive organization that says, you're what makes our community great, and we want to help you make our community great. Uh, attraction crew deals more primarily with the sports and attractions of our community, so they are doing a Roughnecks tailgate, uh, which is, uh, you know, with the Roustabouts, their, their, uh, their header group, and so we're excited to showcase the sports talent in our community and these attractions. Uh, they did a great deal as a sneak peek with uh, flying tea, we did one with uh, bowl and spoon cereal, so new businesses as well as uh, sports organizations. Again, playing that role of the liaison to the community to somebody who's new or to somebody that just hasn't been plugged in and has now got uh, you know, an opportunity in their life to get more involved in the organization or in the city as, as a whole. Urbanists, uh, and I'll get to their kind of achievements or their grand achievements later, but Urbanists deals more with the urban core and development. Uh, this goes to, I think, what our presentation was labeled as, which is placemaking. And they really work to create a sense of place that is walkable, that encourages people to get out, knowing that sales tax is a large driver of everything that happens in our community, uh, something that allows people to spend more money in more retail establishments, and doing that through smart planning and smart growth in our community. Uh, they also do some great events like Street Cred, which I'll touch, touch on later, and some of you may have been part of or seen, but um, really impactful change-making happening in that crew as well. Next Generation Leadership is exactly what it sounds like. It's the crew that people get plugged into to hear from people like Allison Anthony or other leaders in the community and do LED series. Uh, they do really, uh, they do our get on board session, which places about 105 
individuals from our organization on boards throughout the community, and serves as, they serve as interns to that board. So it's really that leadership development, whether it's personal or professional, gives individuals an opportunity to develop themselves and grow themselves and learn from mentors like you all who have been in the industry for a long time or have been in that um, you know, in the community for a long time and know the trials and tribulations and the, you know, uh, ways to get things done. So it's an opportunity for mentorship, and that's the crew that really leads that effort. Government relations, again, just like it sounds, uh, works very uh, hard to make sure that we are heard at the Capitol. Uh, I would say when I first started, and this is the crew that I came up leading, uh, we did this day at the Capitol visit, and the legislators and the cabinet would give us good lip service. They would come and talk to us and, you know, hear, hear us out, but really didn't have that longevity and connectivity. So one thing that they've done is developed that day at the Capitol session to now have a survey that we do of our members, and we have very good data that says, if you want to know what people under 40 care about, this is what they care about. And then we pair it with legislation that ties to those issues. So whether it's education funding, whether it's a modernization of, of beer and wine sales, um, you know, any number of topics, diversity, any of the things that really correlate to these key points, we're taking down there and lobbying our legislators once a year at the beginning of session. And now they're coming to us and saying, what do you think about this legislation? I'm thinking of drafting this. How would, you, how would it be perceived? Do you have any suggestions on how to tweak it? So we've really, in the last five years of our organization, had much more significant impact on that policy side and that decision-making side. And uh, I'll get to some of those efforts that we've done specifically this year to voter engagement here in a little bit, but they've helped tremendously on that. Business development, working with, uh, again, business leaders doing things like a View from the Top series that uh, gives opportunities for kind of a speed dating session with CEOs and captains of industries to talk to five or six individuals at a table at a time and really have a candid conversation about how they got where they are in their career and how somebody just coming up can really position themselves best to get ahead in, the, in their goals in life. And so awesome uh, programming that comes out of that as well as our Bring It to Tulsa, which again I'll, I'll touch on here in just a little bit, tell you about that specific programming and how it impacts you all in your daily lives. And then the sustainability crew, uh, which has now started transitioned into health and wellness as well, but really focuses on making sure that our community is sustainable on all fronts, you know, personally as well as, you know, in the services provided. And I know they were very, uh, very involved and influential in making sure that we have a recycling program to this day. So they've had some really great successes over the years as well. And uh, like I said, they're transitioning more to personal wellness and health, which is something we historically have not really touched on, but have seen there's a gap there within that community and with the healthcare industry for a networking trade group like ours to take a foothold and give opportunity for, for those individuals to connect. So, uh, jump back here. Civic engagement. This is really my passion point. This is where I have a lot of experience um, over, you know, a, a number of careers. And uh, this year, as, as the chairman of the organization, came into it with an understanding that it's a political environment. And we are a very nonpartisan organization. There is nothing that uh, we do that you will... Um, that you will see that is an endorsement of any candidate or any position. Uh, we simply, as our mission says, provide a resource. We provide peer-to-peer -peer outreach and a resource for individuals to be able to register and to, to be involved in the community. And so on the civic engagement front, uh, going back about fall of last year, really had some candid discussions with some of the family foundations and other people in our organization about how we could leverage our position and our network and our outreach to really have significant impact. And what we decided is to create a campaign we called Love Tulsa Vote. And what we recognized in, in reaching out to our uh, peers is that people are disenfranchised, they're apathetic. They feel like their vote doesn't mat matter, that their uh, opinion will be outweighed by somebody who can outspend them, and that really, at you know, the end of the day, the decision's gonna be made by you know, uh, a larger power than themselves. And what we recognize is that conversation really is rooted in national politics. And the fact that Oklahoma only, only has a couple of electoral votes, that we don't have a significant sway uh, in that conversation. And so we boiled it down and we said, what does it take to really have impact? How can we combat and, and dissuade somebody that has been apathetic most of their life to say, your voice really does matter? And so we boiled it down to local politics and understanding that most elections are won by you know, 10% margin. Most municipal elections are 40 to 70,000 turnout. And so in order to create a new voting block that has significant impact, it's only about 3,500 people. That's roughly one-tenth of TCC's population. You know, that's less than half of our demographic and our membership. So 
the bar is very low to have significant impact in local elections. And so to communicate that and to share that resource, to say, you may have heard that your voice doesn't matter, you may have thought that your candidate would never win or that you would never have any sway on an election, but when you're talking about a school bond vote that has 17,000 people that turn out, and when our de proportionate share of that demographic is about 4% for that turnout, then if we just give a 50% increase, then we've got a significant impact there. And that's what we did going back to last year with the last school bond vote. And we saw a 50% increase in that election of our demographic turnout. Taking on that and building on it for this year, we talked about things like vision, things that we knew correlated to passion points that people would get excited and, and encouraged about being part of the process. And so when it came to vision, talking about water in the river, talking about uh, the education and economic development opportunities, arts, you know, these things that we've surveyed and clearly have a correlation to quality of life and long-term outcome of a community and have a resonance with our demographic. So we changed the conversation to say, if you care about this, then participate in this. We aren't going to tell you how to vote. We aren't going to say you should do this or you shouldn't do that. We think you're smart individuals. We want you to just know when to vote and why your impact matters, why your vote matters. So we went out and we went to captive audiences. We went to places like St. Patrick's Day or Hop Jam or TU you know, the school universities, um, yeah, campuses, and we went to them. We didn't wait for them to come to us. We went to them and we t told them this message and gave them this you know, explanation of how they could really change the outcomes of everything that happens in our community and collectively we could have serious impact on every election. Um, and so we did that and we registered about 600 new voters in this last three or four months and in the vision vote as well as this last June election vote saw additional 50% increases relative to the last local elections in our demographic. And this is in a time and era where 10% turnout is the norm, where almost every community in the country is trying to figure out how do you engage your young people to take ownership of what's happening in their community and, and what that means uh, for their daily lives and, and participation in civic engagement. So we are very excited through this Love Tulsa Vote campaign to be out talking to people, not influencing them, just saying your vote matters and this is why it matters and we want you to be part of our group that's saying we care and we vote. And so we, we had some, uh, as you can see, 31 100 or 30, almost 3,200 more young voters in the June election than in the 2013 election, uh, representing about a 50% increase in that demographic turnout. 16.5% uh, of all voters up from an 11% turnout there. And uh, we exceeded the expected turnout based on the experts and pollsters by 15%. That ties into placemaking, which uh, I'll get back to urbanists and street cred there, but um, at the end of the day, what we've recognized is over the last 10 years, we've had great opportunity to, uh, to make a, an impact on, in programming and, and obviously politics and policy making will have that long-term impact for the community. But in placemaking, we do things like Street Cred 66, which this year was on 11th Street, uh, Route 66, an asset that we cherish, that we have nostalgia for, uh, but that was long forgotten. And so we went out there and rolled up our sleeves, took two weekends, and made sure that every uh, person that wanted to have an opportunity to clean up frontage, to go plant plants, to go out, do outreach to other stakeholders in that thoroughfare, like uh, the uh, uh, Center for individuals with disabilities, and I'm probably ruining the name, but right there on 11th Street, or galleries or schools, that they had an opportunity, and we worked well with TU and, and other stakeholders in the community to make sure that we were encouraging them to get out and take ownership of what we were gonna leave behind. But our organization is a group of doers, and this is indicative of us going out and just doing. We think this could be an awesome, awesome opportunity for the city of Tulsa and for developers to come in and really make this great. We started with the Pearl District back before 6th Street was anything, and we just put up some great uh, green uh, frontage, you know, some trees, we did some renovations, we put in some pop-up shops, and today it's something amazing. And so what we try to do, this is our fifth year this year, is go out to neighborhoods and communities that have been forgotten, roll up our sleeves and just do it and leave it behind better than we found it with stakeholders that have an interest in maintaining it. And so we were excited to do that and make, bring that part, bring that to our community. Uh, when, the idea behind that, when no part of Tulsa is neglected, the entire city benefits. So, you know, 36th Street North talking about food deserts, uh, talking about transportation on Route 66 and the bus rapid transit system and walkability, um, you know, disability access, things like that. Those are things that have a long-term impact for our community. 
Uh, additionally, we've created a foundation, putting our money where our mouth is. As I mentioned, we fundraise. Uh, I see some sponsors here in the, in the room right now. We thank you for giving us the ability to use your funds prudently. Uh, one of the ways we do that is through the Thai Pros Foundation, where we give back uh, last year, granting a little over $30,000 to the community, uh, or right around $30,000. And these are micro seed grants. Again, you know, it's not perfect, but it's action. And we're empowering young people to say, do you want to paint a crazy mural of this guy named Bill Hader that says haters don't hate? Or do you want to bring back the raft race? Or do you want to go and, and invest in a, a in a community benefit like Resonance Take Two downtown, which uh, is a partner that we've, we've created through this progr program? And so we just empower our demographic to go out and have crazy ideas and do them. And we are generally the first funding that they get, but usually leveraging other funding in the community. So this is our second year now of granting. We'll be doing an announcement in the fall of the next recipients of these funds, but uh, we're excited to be able to give back to the community in a tangible way and to, again, go back to our mission of empowering, encouraging, and providing a resource for young people to take hold in the ownership of their community. Uh, same with Bring It to Tulsa. This is the business development cruise program that you guys are probably most familiar with. We did a guerrilla marketing campaign to bring Uber to Tulsa. They uh, showcased us as one of the best communities to interact with. We helped them write some ordinances that were critical to them being able to function in our community. And uh, really through our initiative, they are here, as well as Trader Joe's, uh, again, doing a pop-up shop, just saying, we've got 8,000 members, we're gonna go buy Trader Joe's food, we're gonna go set it up in a vacant space, and we're gonna show Trader Joe's the demographic data that they need to see. We're gonna show them where the zip codes are that people are coming to and what kind of impact they could have in our community if they decided to open this, us up as their new market. So we've had great success with those. We're working on our third iteration of that, um, but there's, uh, it's, it's a unique program that other chambers look at us and say, how do you attract businesses, but not, not just the talent, but the businesses as well, and this is something that's uh, worked tremendously for us. I'll leave you with a little slide of our, our website. It's typros.org. Um, it is a great uh, resource for a community calendar, for these work crews, for the initiatives that we're doing, for the blogs uh, that our leaders are putting out there. And I would encourage you to share the word of our organization with your friends, with your family. And if you're inclined, come join us. We meet 80 to 100 times a, a year. Uh, we have every crew meeting every month, uh, any given week. So if you're interested and curious in, in what we're doing, with you, with other people in the community to make our uh, community better and more vibrant, I would encourage you to come out and participate and check us out on typepros.org. Thank you very much, Daniel. We have a book that we present in view of a speaker's gift to our adopt -a school Silly Clinton Elementary. And if you wouldn't mind inscribing something in this book for me, and we'll present it to the library there. Um, I must confess, I crawled your website quite a bit the last two days. I thoroughly enjoyed it, watched a lot of videos, and I applied to your organization. I haven't heard back, so I think you found out I'm not a young professional, but we'll see where that takes us. <laughs> I am young at heart. So thank you very much. It was very enlightening, Daniel, you too. Uh, Catherine, you're on. Tell us what's going on in the Rotary world and raise some money for us for our community fund and international fund. It's, it's always my goal to raise the money. But, Daniel, where's my clicker? <laughs> A little joke. I warned him that I'd have to embarrass him if he, if he took off with my <laughs> clicker. So, uh, I am so excited today. We have lots of good slides to show, but um, let's just start right out. Now, Bob, congratulations, but I have to tell you that my friend, Jim Morrison, is celebrating 40 years of perfect <laughs> attendance. <laughs> and he was, he was nice enough to give me money for doing so. So I want you to remember <laughs> this because next year, you know, you'll have to do the same. Uh, but thank you so much, Jim, and great job on perfect attendance. And next we have Andy Avila, he celebrated his birthday. Uh, his beautiful wife, Begonia, I'm sure that she's the one who took you to Costa Rica, right? Uh, so they celebrated in Costa Rica. They're, this is a photo of them um, on a plantation 
that makes coffee for the U.S. market. It's called Bella Vista, and you can okay. buy it at Starbucks. So there's a little plug for Bella Vista, and happy birthday, Andy. <laughs> and where is T.C. Blair? Oh, all the way in the back. Happy birthday, T.C. Thank you for $200 donation, and happy birthday to you. So um, if you see him tomorrow, be sure to pat him on the back, because that's his big day. All right, and now, Michelle Place, where are you? All of your friends, well, I mean, not all of your friends, because you have lots and lots and lots of friends. <laughs> but we have some that because you had recently paid a big fine for someone else, your friends jumped in and paid a wonderful $360 fine for you. They're listed, it's Matt, Tiffany, Richard, um, Bill Muller, Tim and Barbara Nall, Diane Peacock, and Bob, they all pitched in for you. So thank you everybody for supporting all that. Right. And congratulations again to Michelle for the wonderful job winning the Emmy along with uh, Kirkpatrick and Kinslow. So great job there. And now, shaking things up at Rotary. How many people in here were at a fireside with me? Raise your hand. There were lots of you because I did three firesides, oh. okay? <laughs> and no, I'm not an overachiever. Well, maybe I am. But anyway, uh, I attended three because I was a facilitator for three. And the message that we heard, that I heard over and over, and some of you will agree with me, is people were saying, you know, everybody kind of gets in a click. They're all sitting at the same table, and they're all talking to the same people, and we don't get to, to meet each other. So today... I have planted a mystery Rotarian amongst you. And the mystery Rotarian today is Jan Lobb. Jan, will you please come on up here and join me for one second? We're only doing this this way because I didn't plant a microphone in her uh, purse or anything before she went over. So. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I could have just She could have oh, done it Jen, from the back. Everyone will hear Jan out. I'm just kidding. But look, another tall girl up here. How about that? Um, so, Jan, did you meet anyone new today? Um, I did meet somebody new. Um, I, only had two, I sat at a table where only had two Rotarians because Andy took up the table with his guests. He had so many. Um, Overachiever. <laughs> yeah. But I had, I had never met Andy that I'm aware of, so it was nice to get to know him. And Very he nice. And his birthday and his wife. And so now we're like. Exactly. <laughs> uh, did you learn something new? Um, I did. I learned something new by sitting someplace different with somebody I haven't sat with for a while. Um, and if you ever want to sit at a table where you don't know a lot of people, sit with Regina because she <laughs> has the best questions to ask you. I mean, she asks a question and then they just, I thought I had it all down and then she asked like two questions. I'm like, wow. Regina Moon. Yeah, so it depends on who you sit with, how much information you get out. Okay, and then finally, and most importantly, were they nice to you? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, that is one guarantee that you will have being a member of the Rotary Club of Tulsa, is that you're guaranteed, no matter what table you sit at, that people will be nice to you. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jan, for being my first mystery Rotarian. <laughs> I, I need some. I need to have some music like bum 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 or something like that. Bum bum bum. Yeah, you do that. Next time we do this, you do that. Okay. When okay. I say Mr. Rotarian. Bum bum bum. Got it. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Now, calling all tennis players or people who have a lot of yellow balls at their house. Um, Celia Clinton, for those of you who don't read, I'm sure there's none of you in here who don't read the email that comes out, but uh, we do need some tennis balls. Celia Clinton School, they're going to put these tennis balls, as you see in the photo, on the bottom of the uh, chairs, on the legs. And what that does is it keeps their new tiles from being messed up and scraped up and marked up. So, uh, and I think it's probably a lot quieter. Can you imagine like 30 kids in a classroom all getting in and out of their seats? And so I'm Catherine. sure I don't want to interrupt. That re just reminds me. I, I had a tennis ball in my oh, pocket. Hey, oh, no, I told you don't throw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to throw the clicker earlier. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, yeah, this is what we want. So, Does anybody else happen to have a tennis ball in their pocket? <laughs> oh, <no>! oh. <laughs> I thought there might be one or two out there. <laughs> Me 
You know, I saw some of the photos of these faces that you do with me. Yeah, no. no. I told you to watch out when you said yes. Yeah, I want all of the tape destroyed, okay, <laughs> after, after I'm out of here. All right, so please, um, don't throw them at me, but please bring tennis balls. And there's a nice little box outside somewhere. So, and thank, the, thank you to those who participated in John's little thing. <laughs> Oh. Okay, now it's time for 50-50. Now, people, we have, we, the pot right now is $461. And I'm going to tell you, it should be well over 1000 right now. So I need you all to bring your money. Those of you who bought tickets before Barney arrived, let me just say, I found out that Barney's been doing some brother-in-law deals out there with our ticket sales. Did you all know that? Like he's like slipping, like if you give him a tenner or a fiver or a twentier or whatever you want to call it, he'll give you like a few extra tickets. I did, and I was like, hey, I'm here to raise money. You give me five, you're getting five. So uh, you probably want to hang out and check with Barney to buy your tickets. But thank you for those who did. So I think that Angel should come up and do our drawing today. Would you like to Oh, wait, I just gave place? Angel five tickets. Uh, Jeff, can you watch Angel's five tickets? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll watch the tickets. All right. We wouldn't want her drawing her own number there. Oh, no, that's okay if she does. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, we would. You know, she looks pretty honest to me. I don't I think know. she has like a ticket glued to her hand or anything. So, well, <laughs> huh? the new rotary jacket. All right, here we go, young lady. Please. Two, four, seven, three, two, zero. All right. There he is. All right. Come on up and draw a card. You're going to see how, this, how we rock this place, if you could call it that. All right. Here he goes. Matt, are you ready? I have to cut you the gotta cards. You've got to cut the cards. You know, he's always thinking somebody's seeing that bottom card. <laughs> now, do you know which card you're going to draw? I mean, do you know which one you're planning or trying to draw? Um, yeah. Okay, it would be the Joker. the Joker. Okay, best of luck, friend. Anywhere in here? Just, just choose Can you something. Flip them this way and display them. I could, but then that would be cheap. So, uh, once uh, again, we have the most loving Rotarians. <laughs> Everybody is choosing hearts. Well, thank you for playing. I'm sorry that you didn't win, but another heart. Okay, good job, everybody. Now, last but not least. Guys, I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, well, it doesn't even matter. Send me money. That's all I have to say. That was the last <laughs> slide. The last slide is, here's how you contact me. If you have a birthday in August, I didn't get you yet, but I'll get you. So send me some money, pay me a fine, and Jessica, you can see me after to pay um, the fine for Linda. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Catherine. As always, I encourage you to tell your friends and coworkers about our community, Tulsa, and about our elite organizations that we have, Rotaract, Typros, and Rotary. Invite them to join us in service and to make a difference in our community. A bunch of good people doing a bunch of great things. Right after we adjourn, please take a moment to come up front and meet Kara and shake her hand and welcome her to the club. And again, thank Bob and Paula for their sponsorship. And also come join Daniel, Daniel, Kathy and I at First Friday. We're adjourned.